G'day folks, well, I thought I'd do an official video on this one, this is a uh, another electrolysis tank of mine. I canned the other one which was sitting on the photocopier stand, that's all gone and replaced with shelving and other junk. So I figured I'd better build another ele electrolysis system because I've got other projects waiting for uh, rust removal like this Kelly and Lewis engine. Um, this one's going to be on using a deep freezer or chest freezer as a electrolysis tank. And they're pretty well sealed, they're a very solid unit, they're designed to actually hold water. Like if it's fully iced up and defrosted, it's not designed to leak on the floor. But just for extra precautions, I've sealed anywhere where they've rolled and crimped the sheet metal shut on the cabinet. I've just lined it with a bit of silicone and just covered up the uh, basket holes. There's, there's probably a petition or a basket retainer or something like that in here and there were some square holes which you could see the uh, polyurethane lining foam through so I've sealed them up with bits of plastic it was just bits of like outer layer from a LCD panel big LCD television um, it does still peel off if you try and peel it off but so far it's holding up pretty good the silicon's just black roofing silicon and that's not coming off I just roughed the surface up with a bit of emery cloth and then uh, wiped it down with acetone wiped the plastic sheet with acetone and let it all dry and then stuck it on and just line her out really easy you stitch it out from the outside you shouldn't get too many air bubbles although some of them showed up like stitching a patch on an inner tube or something and yeah it's worked they haven't lifted no water leaking yet so let's add two pounds of sodium bicarbonate or a kilo of sodium bicarbonate Probably not quite enough for a tank this big, but should be just right, I reckon. There's no science to it. I have to mix this up, obviously. So once all that's dissolved, I can make up an anode assembly and lower that into position. Uh, I'm only doing small parts at the moment, so I'll just use bits of old computer case that bit of an old air conditioner condensing unit the partition between the fan box and the um, compressor so, just anywhere in there never close the lid on something like this or seal it up because you do generate hydrogen and if something arcs out inside while this whole cavity is full of hydrogen or oxygen mixture boom it'd probably blow the lid up and through the side of the shed but it's uh relatively safe, especially being outside. I'm kind of glad to move this thing outside. I'm just going to mix it up. Your uh, anode plates, sacrificial anode plates can be anything. Uh, Galvanised steel isn't too bad. The zinc does turn to oxide immediately. Never use stainless steel though. You do end up with a solution of hexavalent chromium afterwards and it is highly toxic to the human body. It is classed as a hazardous waste by the EPA and you get into massive trouble for dumping it I mean, you pretty much have to call in a hazmat crew to get rid of it so never ever use stainless steel as a sacrificial anode there's the uh, cathode like an alligator clip or something on the cathode stainless is alright because it's being protected it's being cleaned but if it's being eroded as an anode it'll turn into hexavalent chromium and make your solution toxic toxic waste so stir this up and build an anode assembly and go from there. So there's a couple of anodes there. Just use the uh, sides of the old HP Pavilion PC. They're painted on the inside so I shouldn't get too much transference to this if there's any scratches in the paint. Not there. This inner cabinet's made out of steel as well and it probably grounded because the refrigerant lines run around the outside of it. So it will be grounded and be going to ground. Um, and that means it could possibly become part of the circuit and start eating through. So I might end up protecting it by trickling a negative DC charge to it as well as the workpiece. I'll just put a big resistor across it and protect it that way. Sort of like elect electrolytic rust prevention, which is something a friend of mine works in. He installs systems on the reinforcing rods for piers and dock, seaside uh, loading docks and things to stop the, stop the uh, 
reinforcing rods from rotting out. They weld all the rods together as a grid and then they put an electrical charge through it and it stops the uh, salt water from attacking them. It's quite neat. Same with oil and gas pipelines that go cross country. The surface pipelines are susceptible to rust, particularly around the welds, so they run a very light DC charge through them and it stops the rust. Um, this is very similar. Electrolysis of or electrolytic rust removal is pretty much the same thing. There's a sacrificial anode and the uh, piece with the negative DC charge is actually protected and cleaned at the same time, so it works quite well. Uh, let's hook up some power. I'll get the power supply out and wire that up. Alright, well this is the power supply I'm going to use. It's the same one out of the uh, original electrolysis tank system. It's from a Minolta DI620 photocopier. Uh, 24 volts at roughly 20 something amps at the most. I've done a few little mods. I've taken the aluminium plate off the top and just bolted extra heat sinks onto the uh, I think they are power regulation FETs or switch, sorry, switching FETs plus whatever other transistors there are. There'll be regulators and switching FETs. And it's done quite well. It's filthy dirty at the moment. I haven't cleaned it in about 12 months. But it just goes to show how tough these power supplies are. And it's covered in dirt and crap. So I'll give it a quick blowout with the compressed air and find a place to mount it with some fans on it. That's the only thing. It needs fans. Now that I've taken it out of its enclosure, it's uh, I'm going to need, a, need to build a new enclosure. I'll replace this loom as well. That can be remade. Just use the original connector. Hmm. Made this one a while ago, actually. This thing's probably been around about two years or so. This thing's been running my electrolysis. I've always used switch mode power supplies, and I've never had a problem with them. I know some people say you can't use switch modes, but no oh, bugger them. This thing has been absolutely perfect. Caked in dust and shit at the moment, and it still works. There we go. Probably not the best way to set up a power supply, but I'm all out of electrical cabinets at the moment, so this should do it. Next time I'm down at the yard, or I might even see my neighbour and see if he's got any little fire fire control cabinets. Oops, I just pulled the fan wires out, but that really needs to be hardwired. I've just stuffed them into that connector for the DC 24 volt. Uh, yeah, let's reconnect the fans and plug this thing in. Yeah, it's working pretty well. I'm pulling about 17 amps. I put an amp meter in after I started it. Just an inline one. These ones are really good. Yeah, 17 to 18 amps. 24 volts DC. Seems pretty good. Good airflow. Okay, we're still running pretty good. Parts ready to come out for clean down and paint preparation. Sitting on about 18 amps, just under 17 amps. Depends on where I put the part in the tank. Uh, temperature also has a bit of a uh, effect on it. It started out at 20 when I turned it on this morning. I did have it shut down overnight, but it's uh, settled in quite well. Still got plenty of airflow. Yeah, I've got to make a proper case for this power supply because a lot of life dangerous parts on it. I don't want it just sitting here in an empty tub. So, turn that off. And I'll get the part out and clean it up. Well, that's the finished part after electrolysis. A little bit of flash rust. Um, this is black oxide which I haven't been able to scrub out with scotch bright, but that's not a bad thing. An etch primer will take care of this now. Main thing is all the grease and grime's gone. Um, major rust. Just needs a bit of a wire wheel, if anything. But takes a hell of a lot of work out of the process of cleaning shit like this up. I mean, this thing's probably a hundred years old and looks like new again. Raw iron casting. Good. Only everything turned out like that. I've got to do this cylinder head next. Don't know about the block, although it probably would fit inside this freezer. <laughs> the whole Kelly and Lewis block. 
and the flywheels and the crankshaft and things. The crankshaft I'll probably have to get ground ever so slightly and then take a shim out of the bottom end bearing cap. This old generator, similar sort of setup, it's got a uh, collar with the brushes mounted on it. That can be done. Uh, yeah, lots for this old uh, freezer to do now. Well, it's not a freezer anymore, it's an electrolysis tank. I cut the power cord off and it's got no gas left in it, or very little. So it's just an electrolysis tank. Yeah, so that's who's throwing shit on my roof. Bloody cockatoo's eating the pears off the pear tree down the back. <laughs> there goes one. Bang. You little bastard. Tree's full of cockies. Stop eating my pears, little bastards. <laughs> oh, look at the little bastard. Chopping them off at the stem. Ha, ha, ha.